As you know, HDR is a very important part of your ABR part three oral exam, something medical physicists must know. And so today let's cover some HDR questions. So you receive HDR source today, who signs for it and why? What do you do after accepting the package? What is the significance of the labeling on the side of the HDR container? What readings would you expect to get for the required measurements? What does the Department of Transportation call this material when it is shipped? Where would you store it until a service person gets there? And finally, what is the approximate source strength? So a lot of these I don't think would be primary questions on your oral exam, but these some of these are supplemental questions. They may ask you in a secondary nature. As you are answering, they may chime in and ask you some of these. So it's important to cover all of it. And the best way to do that is just to go ahead and list these for me. That way I can cover them and I don't forget to, to discuss them. So a HDR source has arrived there who signs for it. It must be a authorized user. So typically an AMP medical physicist signs for this. You need someone with training and someone who is on the radioactive license. So now what do you do after accepting the package, including the instruments and the tests done? So First, you want to inspect the package. You want to ensure that there is no damage. All the labeling is there. You would then want to take a reading at the surface. So I'm going to put, I should just put surface reading. Instead, I'm going to put surface or reading surface. <laughs> and that should be, and these are really good numbers to somewhat memorize here. They all, they all are going to differ, obviously, but the ones in my clinic typically range around 12 MR per hour. So that's at the surface. And then you also have a reading at one meter. And that one reading, that one is approximately 0.4 MR per hour. So knowing these, I think is good, shows that not only have you done it, but you know the rough numbers Examiners really like to see that and it will make them feel comfortable that you are clinically viable. You also want to do a white test over at least 100 cm squared of the surface and you can use a ion chamber and a Geiger Mueller counter for white tests. So now what is the significance of the labeling on the side of the HDR container? So I'm gonna start writing down here. So because we have Iridium 192, this has a yellow two label and essentially it's just a diamond. It's on the container and that is dependent on the surface readings and the readings at one meter away. So if it were higher, it could get a more dangerous. It's essentially a more dangerous package. So it could increase in the, the labeling, but for iridium, they are always yellow too. So something to remember. Now, what readings would you expect to get for the required measurements? So kind of already mentioned here, a 12 MR per hour for the surface, 0.4 for one meter away. And then for the wipe test, let me write that down here too. So this is important and you're going to get approximately 22 counts per minute after you subtract background. So what does the Department of Transportation call the material when shipped? That is called a special form. So notice it's not a byproduct, it's a special form. Now, where would you store it until a service person gets there? So now you want this in a locked room, a cabinet, and you want obviously somewhere that is posted for radioactive material. Now you want somewhere that's been shielded and not next to offices because you're going to have your new source and your HDR, then you're going to have this older source. And that is quite a bit of activity. So you don't want it right next to where someone may be sitting like a dosimetrist all day and it, it getting through the walls or somewhere that's not shielded. You want to reduce exposure as much as humanly possible. So be cognizant of where you store this. And then finally, what is the approximate source strength? Typically, it depends on the state, and it depends on how much you have in your radioactive license, how much you can have in your clinic at one time. A decent answer for this question on the exam, I would say, is something higher than 10 curie. 
but it won't be put into the afterloader until it is 10 carry. Now that's based on some state regs. I don't know where you are. It's best to brush up on those regulations yourself and be able to answer those. But this is a good, good kind of question to mention radio, you know, radiation safety, what to do with HDR sources and something that is very up for game in terms of asking you in your part three exam. So if you have any questions, comment below. Thanks for watching.